Tribe of Names. You want to talk about guitars? Boy, I really want to talk about guitars. If you've been following the live Tribe of Names videos, you'll notice that they use a different guitar for pretty much every video because of the feel or the sound of that particular guitar. If I'm very clever, there's now pictures of the guitars that I've used for the Tribe of Names videos going across. If I'm not, that's kind of what you expect. Anyway, I love guitars. I have many. I worked at a music store for a long time, and I started accumulating then, and that's slowed down since I left the music store, but it hasn't stopped. There's a guitar there. There's one hanging on that part of the wall. There's three more there, because I'm not great at putting stuff away. There's a whole bunch right there. So we've got a lot of territory to cover. I divided them up into different categories. Uh, so there'll probably be four or five of these videos. I try to keep it interesting. I try to keep it as short as possible. Um, but I just love talking about guitars and telling things to people who like to hear about guitars. So this is for you guys. Um, the first category we're going to come to is what I call the Frankenstein guitars. Guitars that I have taken... Uh, you know, parts from one guitar and another guitar and sort of recombined them and made something completely new. So we'll take a look at those. Next video might be some rare guitars that I have. Uh, after that will be some more run-of-the-mill stuff. We'll see what happens along the way. start at the beginning, how original. Uh, this was the first good guitar that I ever owned. It started out life uh, as a 1986 Fender Contemporary Telecaster. It had a humbucker and two single coils, no pick guard. It was all blacked out. Uh, it was a locking tremolo system. It was with me all through college and through my first full-time band. It took a beating. It actually got sold for a while and really took a beating and then it came back to me. Uh, and it was it was a wreck. So I had to do some rebuilding on it. Uh, this was sort of at the height of my guitar customizing madness when I was working at a music store. So um, I took the locking mechanism off of here and put locking tuners on it. The bridge is not a locking bridge. The strings just go in through the back so the ball, is, ball ends are sitting there uh, and it will rip itself out of tune. It's much, much more stable now with the locking tuners. I had to do something about the electronics. They were destroyed. Uh, so I put a pick guard, a chrome, found this cool chrome pick guard to cover over the middle pickup hole. Uh, it's a, some sort of Fender Telecaster pickup I put in the neck. And uh, as of the last couple of weeks, it's got a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge. And then I redid all the wiring down here. Uh, originally, it was a volume knob and a tone knob, and then three little switches that operated, oops, sorry, three little switches that operated the pickups individually. That just didn't work for me. Uh, it was one of the reasons that I sold the guitars because the layout of the controls just bothered me. So I took a drill to it. Uh, now I've moved it down so it's volume and tone on the bottom. This three-way switch just operates the two pickups, and this is a coil tap that I pretty much never use. Uh, but it's still a lovely guitar to play 35 years later. Uh, I still really enjoy it. Uh, the wall, another interesting thing, uh, when I do use this coil tap, I've got it set up so that it actually turns off the inner coil rather than the outer coil. Uh, most coil taps will turn off the outer coil. 
but by turning off the inner coil, it still gets that really nice Telecaster. So it does have that nice sort of authentic Tele sounds to it. Um, plus you can still throw in all kinds of stuff and play really loud and fast with it. Another neat thing uh, is that it has a really long tremolo bar, so it has more of a sort of a Bigsby feel to it, really, with it. You can leave your jokes about long tremolo bars in the comments. Is the mystic special i can't take any credit for this guitar but it's a frankenstein guitar and this is the frankenstein chapter of uh, my little journey through the guitar collection i bought this in a place called alpha sound in mystic connecticut if you're ever in mystic connecticut go to alpha sound it's an amazing music store best better yet i bought this guitar for two hundred dollars obviously somebody made the body and the neck they're not finished the greatest but it looks okay from far away. Real Wilkinson Bridge, DiMarzio Super Distortion, two original lace sensors, real Spurzel tuners, the body is mahogany. Um, there's nothing to dislike about this guitar. It plays great. They did some interesting things with the wiring. Uh, whoever wired this up was a mad genius, or just mad, I don't know. Uh, it works for me. Uh, all the way down is the bridge. When you go up one, now it's the bridge and the neck. Up another one is all three pickups on at the same time. This is the neck in the middle. And this is just the middle. There's no position where you can get just the neck pickup, which is something I might get a uh, soldering iron out and change at some point. But anyway, wanted to show you this thing. Again, I take no credit for it. I don't know who made it, but whoever did, did an awesome job. preparing for this particular video, it hit me how awesome it is to have awesome friends. Um, this guitar is only possible because of a certain few people who I will name drop mercilessly in just a sec. Um, it is in, I think, in 1980s Charvel body. It's all ash. 
um, with a very, very special neck that I'll get into in a second. Extremely special uh, hand-wound Bill Lawrence pickups. Uh, this neck pickup was wound in his living room while I stood there, which was kind of a cool thing. Um, it's a very special guitar. Sometimes when you build guitars out of scrap parts, they don't come out great. This one is amazing. It sounds great, plays great. Uh, one of my favorite guitars that I've ever owned. And it's all possible because uh, Bald Tom gave me this body. It was in the trunk of his car. He said, here, have this body. I said, okay, what am I gonna do with this? A couple days later, I'm talking to my buddy Joe, and I said, oh, I've got this guitar body. I don't have a neck for it. He said, I got a neck for you. And he sold it to me for embarrassingly cheap. At the time, he told me that uh, Wayne Charvel had built this for him, uh, I think. I don't remember the story. Probably should have asked him before I started this video. Uh, but anyway, so I got the body for free, the neck for embarrassingly cheap. Took these pickups out of uh, one of the PBC guitars that I used to play back in the 90s. If I'm really clever, there'll be a picture of it going across the screen. If I'm not, that's what you get. Uh, and then my buddy Kevin told me about this cool switching mod, because um, there are a bunch of extra holes in the body. I had to do something with them. So that uh, when you're back all the way down on the switch, it's just the bridge pickup. <laughs> Uh, in, you know, bridge and middle. Middle position is this uh, Fender Vintage Noiseless pickup, which I would rather just have two pickups, but there's a hole for it, so there it is. Um, it's kind of useless in there, but it's all right, and it looks cool, so there you go. Uh, and then this super cool neck pickup. Uh, but when I flip the switch, now it adds the bridge pickup to the neck pickup. And when I go back one, now it turns all three pickups on. Um, and then I still have just the middle, middle and bridge, and bridge. So it's a pretty cool setup. Um, this is a very happy guitar. <laughs> that this particular instrument has kind of a lot going on. Uh, I'm not going to go completely into it because there's actually an entire video someplace on the internet, which by the time you see this, I'll have figured out how to put a link to. Um, but for now, just the quick rundown of it. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about with this thing. Started life as a Mexican Nashville Telecaster when I was in the country band. There was something wrong with the neck. Again, having good friends is important. Uh, Jake, who was my boss at the music store, had this Ibanez S540 neck sitting around. Who has that? He gave it to me. Who does that? Jake's a good guy. Uh, so I put that on here, fit like a glove, and again, the Planet Waves locking tuners, because I just really like those. They cut the strings off for me. Labor-saving device. Uh, when Pinnacle got started up, I needed a guitar that I could cover a lot of ground with, because we had no keyboard player, no lead singer, I was doing all of this stuff. So, humbucker in the neck, originally it had a uh, Fender Texas Special in the bridge, I replaced that with a DiMarzio Chopper T. It's got a uh, Fishman Power Bridge in it, so I can also get acoustic sounds from it, uh, and a stereo jack so I can send the magnetic pickups to one place and the acoustic pickups to another place. Um, I had to build this 
control plate out of an old piece of pick guard. Uh, it's just, just so I could have the up and down switch. I don't like that the fender knife switch that goes front to back. I always have trouble getting my pinky in there, so I didn't want that. Plus, it's got a guitar synth pickup on it. So, sadly, this guitar is woefully underused anymore, but it's still a delight to play. And uh, if you're interested more in it, check out the other video. Hey, look, I'm outside in nature like Simon Godfrey. Not really. It's a picture of nature. Anyway, that wraps up our discussion of the Frankenstein guitars. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have questions or comments, love to hear them down below. I'll be back with another one of these videos in a little while. Not too soon, because they take a lot out of you. Until then, Tribe of Names, have a great day.